Hello, Tommy Sports fans, and welcome to another edition of the Tommy Sports Network's Another Angle. I am Anthony Mahadi, and I am joined today by Joe Perry and TJ Bierenbaum to highlight cross country, golf, volleyball, and men's soccer. Fall sports are coming to a close as winter sports are revving up to full speed. Some of these sports will enjoy a short offseason and then return to action come spring. We'll tee off today's episode with the greatest game ever played. The women's golf team concluded the season with an impressive third place finish in the MIAC Championships. The men caught fire in October, turning what looked to be a lackluster season into one to remember. The Tommies bested St. John's in the MIAC Championships for their first MIAC title since 2011 and an automatic bid to the 2018 NCAA Championships in May. After the MIAC season, the men then traveled to Florida for an invitational featuring 13 of the top 25 D3 golf teams in the country, but the unranked Tommies took the crown. Senior Shane Cinco shot a three-day total of six over and was a big part of St. Thomas's MIAC and invitational victories down the stretch. I was able to talk to Shane about his season and ask him a couple questions regarding the fall, and, the fall season and off-season routines. In a web interview with Shane, I asked him a couple questions about his off-season and what the U.S. team men's golf team does during that off-season. Shane had this to say. Quote, during the off-season, Coach Proshek wants our team to be involved with each other as much as possible. Getting everyone involved with each other means building our team camaraderie. Our captains, Pete, Riley, and Matthew, help host several team dinners throughout the year that brings our team close together. Most of my off-season consists of working out and trying to hit golf balls every day. Our simulator in the arc is where I spend most of my time hitting golf balls during the off-season. Coach Proshek says, always prove yourself every day. Shane came off by far his best season at St. Thomas and told me about his goals for the team during the season. When asking him if he was satisfied with the season, this is what he had to say. Yes, you couldn't write up a better fall season for our team and my senior year. Winning the MIAC and taking down all the top teams in the nation at Golf Week was an unbelievable experience. Everyone played fantastic on our team and we had a blast winning. St. Thomas has given me so many great teammates and memories that I will never forget. I only have one last goal in my senior year and that is our team winning the national championship in May. Lofty goals from the senior, but he seemed very confident about his abilities and the abilities of his teammates. Also, Shane has never gotten a hole in one and I have, so therefore, I'm a better golfer than Shane Cinco. Case closed. <laughs> We're going to toss away the clubs and hike up our shorts, pass the baton over to cross country and track. The men's cross country team finished 11th out of 28 teams to conclude their season at the NCAA Regionals. The women's cross country team placed third in the MIAC Championships and fifth in the NCAA Regionals to advance to the NCAA Championships in Illinois at noon next Saturday, the 18th. As the cross country season is coming across the finish line, the offseason is a short dash away. Senior mid-distance runner Hannah Hellstad had some thoughts about the toughest part of the offseason for runners. <laughs> um, so runners are pretty obsessive about running and definitely the hardest part about the offseason is understanding that you need to take a few days off and you know the rule is take two weeks off after season and that's probably the hardest two weeks of most runners life. Um, because the first week's fun and games where you're like, yeah, I can totally take this off. And then the next week comes and you start to feel out of shape and you're really not out of shape, but we're definitely pretty obsessive about it. And so the off season can be pretty hard of the balancing, the need for recovery and the need for, need for running. Hellstad adds that mental endurance is just as important as physical endurance. There's definitely feelings where you are burnt out. I personally, not a huge cross country person. And so I kind of save up all my energy for track. So I'm not burnt out, but there's a huge burnout rate. Just mentally it's tough, but we have typically November and March off from competing. And there are a few more months scattered, but those are kind of big recoup months for a lot of the runners. And so those are the, if you're feeling burnt out, really take advantage of it in those months and reboot when you can. The final thought from my interview with Hellstad was regarding injuries in her sport and how one can create a mental toughness that will allow you to come back from anything. Let's take a listen. It's part of the sport, like injuries do happen, but just understanding that by taking the time off and cross training and eating healthy, you're gonna bounce back and sometimes you come back even stronger, which is, really encouraging and knowing that there's some bad out of the good or good out of the bad. Up next we're gonna set things over to Joe for another angle on women's volleyball. 
The UST women's volleyball team season drew to a close this past week, but not after one of the most memorable seasons in the last five years. In 2012, the volleyball team won the NCAA National Championship, but have been rebuilding the team since then. With their best season since 2012, the Tommies went 10-1 in conference play and 25-7 overall. The Tommies lost in the MIAC Championship, but still squeezed into the NCAA tournament once again. Senior Whitney Lloyd has recorded over 100 kills in each of her four years at St. Thomas and 200 or more since her sophomore year. Lloyd talked about the team's transition over the years. I feel, feel like we've grown a lot um, since that time just because our first year we really had a strong group of seniors where that was, they were sophomores when they won the 2012 championship so after they left it was, we had two returning players and there's a lot of rebuilding that we had to do and just kind of finding like what does Tommy Volleyball mean but um, I feel like that's really built our team. Lloyd well, also said that last year when they made it to the regional tournament, it was really exciting because the previous year they didn't even make it to the playoffs. Lloyd said the disappointment two years ago helped fuel the team in practice in the offseason more than ever. So we went to Nicaragua that summer and I think that really, as a team, so I think that really brought us together too, just getting to spend more time together and um, get to know each other a lot better because honestly it was a lot of the same girls that had in between those two years but it was really just instead of playing like individuals we started playing more like a team. A trip to Nicaragua now that's pretty cool. Lloyd said that everyone on the team really likes each other so it made it a little easier to grow and get to know everyone. She also told me that a large part of their game when in losing situations is staying mentally tough. A lot of it I feel like is staying mentally tough and that it's not our physical but just um, a lot of what we say too is just trusting ourselves and like trusting the people and just playing how you normally play because I think sometimes in those situations we're like, oh, I just want to side out, get the ball, you know, where it gets a little stressed, but just taking a deep breath, having that confidence, knowing that we are a really strong team and we have a lot of really strong players, trusting the people next to you. Toward the end of our conversation, I got some insight from Lloyd about what the team would have to focus on to move forward within the NCAA playoffs. Like I was saying to you in um, practice that we always get that push to keep pushing up our game. So it's nice that it, I feel like now um, it's more just showing up and hopefully on Thursday we'll be able to fight through some of those points that um, where it was really close against St. Ben's and hopefully we'll end up on top. Unfortunately, the Tommy volleyball team was eliminated in the first round of the NCAA playoffs, falling to Wartburg at Northwestern last Thursday. We will look to see how the Tommy volleyball team does in the years to come without star player Whitney Lloyd. I'll now send it over to TJ Bierbaum with another angle on men's soccer. The Tommy men's soccer team is finishing the season in stunning fashion, cruising their way through the first two rounds of the NCAA playoffs. After finishing 18-1 in the regular season, the Tommies rolled on through the Mayak playoffs, beating Hamlin 3-0 and McAllister 5-2 to secure an NCAA playoff spot. This past weekend, the Tommies passed through the first two rounds of the NCAA playoff rounds, dealing with an injured but active Shea Bottom and a suspended Aiden Hogan, managing to leave with a 4-3 victory over UW Superior and a 1-0 victory over Loris. I had a chance to talk to Coach John Lowry about his recent successes as coach, as well as his team-building mentality coming into the deeper rounds of the tournament. Lowry, now in his sixth season as head coach of the St. Thomas soccer team, has put a lot of work into building his current team. The team's success isn't a surprise to the coaching staff, but the recruiting mentality may come as a bit of a shock. Well, we don't want to make an all-star team, you know, and I think that's always the, it sounds kind of funny, but that's something that we have as a philosophy when we go recruiting, you know, so it's not, it's not going to an event and obviously you're, you're captured by talent when you're identifying players, but then can you peel it a layer back and, and see what kind of person is that player? You know, what's their pedigree? What are their other, what are their coaches that have coached them before say about them? What are their, what's their family like? And I think that's, that's a big piece of, um, it's hard to qualify, but when we get into the recruiting process, um, we can, we have a good feeling if somebody is going to be a good fit for St. Thomas soccer. Lowry's approach to recruiting players goes hand in hand with his coaching mentality. We play a certain way. Um, and I think it can change based on pieces of the puzzle, but fundamentally it doesn't change. So, okay. so I, I don't think it's, I think we can tweak little bits and pieces. You know, we can, we can change a tire, we can change a door, we can change a windshield wiper, but we've not, we're not gonna change our engine. 
Okay. And and I think when um, when players come in here, the first thing that we do is educate them on the principles of play that we we expect. With the Tommies rolling through the NCAA playoff bracket, it appears that the coaching style has been working. However, Coach Lowry and the team have been trying to not get prematurely excited about their success. After experiencing a heartbreaking loss in the Final Four last year, Lowry says the team is being careful to not look too far ahead and instead focus on the tasks at hand. We learned so much from that, but in a big way what we learned was that we want to be back. And I think there's a lot of different emotions that go into the idea of being back. It's a tremendously difficult tournament. You know, so there's so much parity in soccer that you can look at our team and say they've won this many games and they this, but but we know that the tournament is filled with parity and every game is going to be uh, a heightened level of intensity. It's it's knockout soccer, which brings a lot to the table, and we have the experience because we've done it. But at the same time, I know uh, we've been waiting for this moment, you know, and I think what we're going to trust now more than anything is I think you have a coaching staff that's been there. Um, you have seniors that have been there. You have some underclassmen that have been there. And now it's their time. The Tommies will have another opportunity to prove themselves in the tournament this year. Coach Lowry is confident in his team, and the team is confident in their talent. As always, you can follow the action on TommySports.com. For all of us here in the studio, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Tommy Sports Network's Another Angle.